Um, okay, so we're going to move on to Dr. Anne Burton, who is the uh, acting uh, chief of public health at the UNHCR. She has worked for UNHCR for 11 years, but now is in Geneva. Um, so where there's a small team that kind of overlooks HCR's technical uh, health program. So we're going to get your presentation up. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present today. Um, I'm going to go quickly through, we were asked to talk about um, our monitoring system in our monitoring systems in relation to NCDs. So what we're what I'm ac ac actually going to do is to look at the extent to which the existing tools that we have are suitable for for monitoring um, NCD uh, programs. I'll be starting with our um, health information system and then moving on to also national data collection and reporting um, systems. Before we start though, when we started to look at this, we started to think, well, what are we actually comparing it to? What, what data should we be collecting? There's no as far as we're aware, and I, I guess that's one of the reasons uh, that we're here, there's no standardized or sort of agreed set of, of data that we should be collecting on NCDs in humanitarian um, settings. <coughs> so just for the purposes of the presentation, I decided to compare it with WHO's Global Monitoring Framework, which breaks, um, breaks um, the NCD um, surveillance down into three separate areas, mortality and mor morbidity risk factors, which are both behavioral and bi biological, and then um, health system responses. So firstly, the health information system that we have is, a, is primarily a surveillance tool, which is mainly to monitor um, communicable diseases, reproductive health, nutrition <coughs> and mortality. It's in place in 143 sites in, 23, in 26 countries, but it was developed for health services which are not yet well adapted to manage um, NCDs. It, it does collect data that's in disaggregated by age and, and gender. Um, it includes four age ca categories. Um, including those that are of interest to um, NCDs, which is from the 18 to um, 59 and o over 60. Um, just as an example, um, this, uh, this shows um, the proportion of NCD consultations in UNHCR supported primary health care centers from a number of countries in, in 2015. It's not including data from the Middle East, which I will show um, shortly. But the countries where N the proportion of NCD, the proportion of total consultations <coughs> was above, uh, that were NCDs was above 10% are the long-term stable settings such as Namibia, Nepal, and um, Bangladesh. No, sorry, not, not Bangladesh, and Ghana. Ghana. Um, this, um, and for example, in, in Kenya, when you look at, um, this is Dadab Refugee Camp, and this was the, out of over um, nearly one, one million consultations annually. Um, in, in 2013, only 30,000 of these, or 3%, were non-communicable diseases. This is not including, for example, mental health, which is collected separately, and it's not including injuries or um, nutrition, which are also collected um, separately. Um, this is in contrast to Jordan. Um, this is the data from 2015 from Zatri Camp, where out of um, nearly half a million consultations, 17% of these were non-communicable diseases. So. Again, not including mental health <coughs> or um, um, injuries. Um, and 
it shows um, so the the commonest types of non non communicable diseases which we which we won't go into because it's been shown but mainly hypertension and di diabetes and you can see the age age um, categories as well. Um, we do also collect mortality and one of the the indicator in the global monitoring framework is actually the risk of dying. Um, from the, uh, the risk of dying prematurely, which is be between the ages of 30 and 70, of one of the four main NCDs. Now we ob obviously can't collect this data from the HIS, but we can, but we, d but we can calculate, for example, in in Zartri in, in 2015, that 35% of the total deaths were were what we would call premature deaths due to NCDs. So of of that were due to these four main um, NCDs. So, so the HIS is one one tool, and it can it's useful for the first uh, for it's particularly useful for the first two objectives. Um, but for the, the the last three, we need other other tools. So for the <coughs> We have another um, tool which we use to monitor the quality of care and the performances of um, health services, um, which measures um, or which assesses um, these in, in, in five key areas, including the services, the um, staffing and coverage, equipment and supplies, quality of care, as well as um, health worker and patient s satisfaction. This data is entered into tablets. It takes about two days to do one, um, one health um, facility. And it measures indicators at the facility level. And depending on what the score is, it can be conducted. If the score is low, then it's conducted again after recommendations within a three month period. If the score is reasonably high, then it would be conducted after a year. But when we started doing this in the Middle East, um, we found that it really wasn't well adapted to settings where the NCD burden was much higher. Um, so currently we have a consultant who's developing, um, who's making some, some changes to the scorecard. And one of the areas that um, he or she is, is looking at is improving the monitoring of, of those five <coughs> areas in relation to NCDs. Um, the third tool that we have is what we call a health access and utilization survey, which is again is a survey that we started to do in the Syrian crisis. Um, and it's actually, it's a telephone survey. It's very, very um, cost <coughs> effective. Um, we were, a were able to collect um, um, population-based based data. There are a number of limitations as it's collected by, by telephone and it's ob obviously just um, registered uh, refugees and, and those which have a phone. <coughs> um, but we can, for example, monitor quality of care given that it is very, very cost-effective. It costs less than $10,000 to do one of these. Um, and we were able to show that bef um, after the withdrawal of free health services in, in Jordan, that those with NCDs, their access to the, who needed to access healthcare in the previous month, that those who couldn't access it, the prevalence, um, the proportion went up from 23% the previous year to 58%. Um, the, la the fourth tool that we have is what we call the SENS, which is a standardized expanded nutrition survey. And just wanted to mention that this is, of course, ma mainly based on acute malnutrition, but we also collect um, anemia prevalence. And we only are collecting anthropometric <coughs> data in, in children 6 to 59 months and women of um, reproductive age, where we just do NUAC. We've only done looked at overweight and obesity in in one um, in one um, setting, and currently we don't have indicators as to when we would look at this. But it's probably something that we should um, start. Um, 
electronic medical records I think we've we've talked about with the cohort with the cohort analysis that was um, presented by UNWA but it's certainly something that we are looking at as well and we do have a couple of partners who are um, who are implementing this um, and we can certainly see the value in uh, monitoring um, patient care and possibly improving um, surveillance as well the last um, the last one that I wanted to talk about was just <coughs> integration international <coughs> systems. So if we look at the global framework, again, there was like, for example, the biological and behavioral risk factors. It's not likely that we're going to have the resources in a refugee setting to be collecting this type of data. But for example, in Jordan in 2017, they are going to be doing a, a step survey and we have, um, we believe that refugees, as a separate sample, will be included in that um, survey. We also would advocate that national data collection systems, such as cancer registry, should also collect data um, d disaggregated at least by nationality and um, preferably re refugee status, and similarly with vital registration systems. So in conclusion, there's um, no agreed set of NCD-related indicators to monitor in humanitarian situations. Um, um, that electronic medical records, they do provide opportunities to improve clinical management, um, data collection, and also clinical audits, but they are costly, uh, and they often require um, in information technology expertise that are not available in, in many, that are currently not available in many settings, and just the importance of national information systems. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. So we're a little bit behind, about uh, eight to ten minutes behind. Are there any clarification questions for Anne before we move on to the last presentation? Sorry, I may have scared people <laughs> away. Okay, well, we'll return to, to this then.